Analog is a pretty tricky thing to get working right, particularly when it gets really sketchy. So what happens is uh, you get vertical image rolling and stuff like that when the signal starts to get really, really weak. And I actually think um, what Carl's come up with here is better than what other goggles have done in the past, because I have yet to see the goggle roll vertically now after this latest patch, even with uh, rapid fire mode one, which always rolls on every goggle uh, when it loses lock. So I'm going to be going into a deep dive of a bunch of different scenarios with rapid fire, TPS fusion, um, and I've, I've got some recommendations for what I think the best mode is going forward. I've also got a link to the beta uh, firmware in the description of the video. Now here's a little background into how analog works um, on most of our analog goggles. Uh, just I'll just read this statement from Carl, it's pretty interesting. He says, you may be curious why other goggles, even crappy ones, seem to have better analog reception than the HD0 goggle, and that's a complicated issue. All other goggles, including box goggles, have a similar architecture that uses a Techwell 883X chipset that takes NTSC PAL um, from the analog receiver, like Rapid Fire and Fusion, and outputs an LVDS, which is like the, the video signal, to the actual screen directly. Um, so what he's saying there is uh, the analog chip is actually driving the screen directly. These goggles do nothing special but use the right chipset and he says I happen to know this chipset very well because I was the designer back in 2007. So he designed the ASIC chip that's decoding the analog video and writing that video to the screen as fast as possible and as stable as possible. Now, HD0 goggle has a completely different architecture. It needs to do analog deinterlacing, 1080p DVR, HDMI in, HD0 in, HDMI out, and everything has to be shared uh, for both bandwidth and uh, bomb cost consideration or bill of materials cost. And HD0 goggle can't use this chipset because it doesn't support 1080p90 MIPI interface, which is the video interface between um, sort of the, uh, the logic board on the goggle and the screen. So analog is an old technology. However, supporting it with minimum latency to the OLED is very hard. Um, you may have experienced the extra lag from like a DJI V2 goggle the analog input always has a 16 millisecond lag or a one frame lag. Um, when you have extra lag to work with, you can make things more stable. But what Carl's doing has essentially zero latency, uh, just like good analog goggles. But he's not using the ASIC chip uh, that, he was, that everyone else is able to use uh, that he developed back in 2007. So, if there are other digital goggles that support analog in the future, they will tell you how hard it is, just as I'm writing now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples um, of really pushing analog to the limit. Remember, this is to the limit uh, where things start to get real weird. And uh, if you want a video of how good it can look, I, I've got one uh, and I can link above. One of the things that was fixed is the uh, TBS Fusion menu and the Rapid Fire menu no longer have color fringing. Um, fun fact, the reason that there was fringing before is because the video signal is actually PAL for these OSDs, um, not NTSC. So the goggle wasn't automatically switching and now it does. So it looks nice. So this is uh, Rapid Fire Mode 1. Um, so you can tell it's mode one, it's got the bars on the top, the OSD, and there it just dropped uh, momentarily to mode two. Uh, but you'll notice it did an image roll, and that's awesome. So nice, good stability here. We want to use mode one when we can. There, it just dropped again, and you can see we did not image roll. And there it dropped again, no image rolls. So that's the key. Um, it's getting a little bit weird. 
we got these kind of diagonal bars and stuff, but never does the image roll, which makes it really easy to fly through. Um, here I'm doing a little dive, drops, and look at that. No image roll, but I guarantee you that one would have rolled on a different goggle. So what I'm going to recommend with a rapid fire and with a TBS Fusion is to just keep it in mode one uh, or TBS Fusion mode, because that's going to be the best quality. That's what we all tend to fly anyway. Um, and that's going to give you the best results because this goggle, I, as far as I can tell, no longer rolls um, when there's a really low signal. There again, you just see these black bars kind of going through. And I think that's actually what the thing is outputting. So here's a TVS Fusion. Um, I prefer to fly a TVS Fusion at this point. Uh, it's also cheaper than a rapid fire. I think the Fusion holds on to its Fusion mode longer than the rapid fire holds on to its mode one mode. So as you can see, I can, I can push it a little harder before it switches into its uh, legacy mode. And you can tell it went into legacy mode because it uh, lost the uh, RSSI OSD overlay and now it just got it back. So that's how these systems are working. By the way, I'm pushing this thing. I'm really pushing it hard. Um, so this next one's a, more of an edge case. This is Wi-Fi interference. Uh, very strong Wi-Fi interference where I'm really far away. And what you're going to see here is blacking out, sort of like black insertion. Um, it's doing this where the video decoder is literally outputting zero signal. So the goggle has a few options in this case. It could output it could output uh, a repeating image. It could pause until it gets an, uh, another signal, uh, at which point it's going to be in the wrong location, or it could just insert black where there is no signal. And that's what it's doing. So this is different than any other goggle because all the other goggles are using that TechWell chip. Um, so what you're going to find with this black frame or black band insertion is that the uh, image is always in the correct location vertically uh, because it's inserting black in the spots that uh, there is no signal. And I find that my persistence of vision is letting me carry through this, uh, this issue. All right, so I got my sky zone on the right here and my HD zero goggle on the left, both with the same rapid fire. And watch, you see the rolling happening on the sky zone. So this is what I'm talking about with vertically, vertical rolling. There it's happening again. And on the HD zero goggle, um, it's getting pretty crazy, pretty weird looking, uh, but it is getting through it without rolling, which for me makes it a lot more possible to fly. Um, there again, we get through with no rolling. And then when the signal recovers, it gets back to showing uh, mode one and there's no rolling when it goes back to mode one. Some goggles will roll when they go back to mode, mode one. Um, so yeah, pretty impressive. So here's mode two performance. Uh, mode 2 is the mode that a lot of racers are running in a rapid fire uh, because it's more stable. And you can see we still end up rolling on the sky zone in mode 2. Here's some slow-mo um, showing how that looks. You can see the uh, kind of black rolling uh, bar that happens when uh, it switches between, when the rapid fire switches between mode uh, 1 and mode 2. You can see it right there and again. Um, but the HD zero goggles holding on the V-Sync properly. And you can see just how much rolling we're getting on the sky zone. Uh, again, same, uh, quad, same, uh, rapid fire, just showing you the, you know, extreme breakup behavior on the two of these. So this is what normal flying with the same drone looks like where we're not trying to push things to the limit. We're just having a good time. Um, this is how you should be flying. You shouldn't be doing the crazy stuff that I was doing. But I just wanted to end this video showing how good it can look, how good it does look. Um, don't let people tell you that HD Zero Goggle doesn't work well for analog, that it doesn't look good. I think this is the best looking 
footage I've ever seen for a, a, a Mo Beetle, uh, which is just not a very <laughs> good camera, not a good lens, but it looks great here. Um, go out and fly, have fun. Don't worry so much about this stuff.